Hey everybody, Dustin here with another Hist of Brick review. Now, hard to believe this for the first time, we're actually not going to do a time-lapse build of a ship, but for a change, it's actually going to be a build of a infamous, but yet a controversial, Titanic lifeboat that was lowered away with only 12 occupants for a possible seat, maximum of 40. So what am I talking about is... The infamous mo money lifeboat, RMS Titanic lifeboat number one. This is the one with Sir Cosmo Duckgorn and his wife Lucille was on board. And the artwork here is actually very fantastic for this one. This is basically, the backdrop is basically one of Ken Marshall's famous paintings of the Titanic sinking and a... Looks kind of looks like a very high angle though, to which I will give them that. You can see the um, the uh, lifeboat right down here. And on the back, it is one three thirty fifth scale, not bad. Two hundred seventy two Lego pieces, built in dimension nine by two and a half by two. And of course, all the contact information is right back here on the sleeve and. Just like the Normandy one, I'm actually going to keep this one because of the uh, artwork. Because it looks nice. It's Ken Marshall's painting, to be honest though. But then again, who doesn't love Ken Marshall's paintings? So, I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the box. Out of the uh, bamboo box. And I'll get right back with you. Alright, so we got the Histo Brick Bamboo Box. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust the camera down. Oops, way too much there. There we go. Sorry, you can't see me, so I'm going to put the lid off to the side. And in this, we get 12 UV printed minifigures, each of the occupants of Lifeboat number one. Then again, there are 12, so 12 occupants that sounds reasonable enough. We got a Histo Brick Instruction assembly book. Now there's about, hmm, should I dare say it, 69 steps in here. We get a bag of printed UV parts. Which is basically mostly slope pieces for a change. Not bad, not bad. We got white pieces in here. And mostly is the... Uh, and last but not least, we get brown pieces with this basically oars. Lifeboat oars. And other brown parts go with it. And we also got this uh, shaft piece. This hollow shaft piece right here. I wonder what this is going to be for anyway. So, pretty good question. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get to building on this. Now, I possibly won't be doing any updates like I normally do for the other ones. So, so it's just going to be straight through. No interruptions. But, next time I'll possibly do one with uh, some stops. So, Without further ado, just sit back and enjoy this time-lapse build. And the thumbs up means that I get to go work on this time-lapse. So, hey everybody, welcome back to my narration once again. And today I'm actually building the lifeboat number one from the steamship, the RMS Titanic. And for those that don't know, lifeboat one is one of the two emergency wind cutters that is located on each side of the RMS Titanic and since this is lifeboat one it is located on the starboard side the primary purpose was to serve the crew in an case of an event of an emergency such as a man overboard so therefore the lifeboats already swung out from the rail to be launched very quickly now for the rest of the uh, clinker built lifeboats they actually had a capacity of 65 this one has a capacity of 40 now, a little backstory on the Titanic. It's the RMS Titanic's maiden voyage. 
and as we know, the ship was actually making very good progress. However, on the night of April 14, 1912, the ship collided with an iceberg and started to sink. However, it didn't take until an, almost an hour to start evacuating passengers off the ship. And now since this lifeboat actually did have a capacity of 40 people, it's actually launched with 12 aboard. Now, lifeboats had already started lowering away at 1240, you know, basically 7, 5, 3, and then it goes to 1. First Officer William Murdoch, who was in charge of the evacuation effort on the starboard side, allowed a number of first-class male passengers to board the lifeboats. However, he did permit five passengers, which includes Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon, his wife, Lady, Lu Lady Duff Gordon, her secretary, Mabel Frankenley, uh, forgive me if I do butcher her name, Abraham Salomon, and C.E. Henry Stangley. Now, the crewmen on board were the lookout George Simons, who he and Archie Jewell were relieved by Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee prior before the infamous iceberg collision, which whom Murdoch placed in charge of the craft, Charles Heck Hendrickson, Samuel Collins, George Taylor, Frederick Sheath, Robert Pusey, and Albert Horswell also board the lifeboat. Now, the problem is with this lifeboat is not a whole lot of people got on it because collapsible sea happened to be right there and it was just really hard to climb up and over just to get into the boat. Now it didn't clear the side of the ship for some time, not until about 105, not 105, uh, 115 a.m. owing to a mishap in carbon on its descent from the boat deck. And this happened that a pro turbine is called a spar at about the, on the B deck level caught on the boat's gunwales arresting the lowering process. It wasn't until the crew used a wire cutter to drop, chop the obstacle away from the boat that was freed and able to reach sea. However, at 2.20 a.m., the RMS Titanic was already long gone, and they were talking about wanting to go back, but Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon said it's out of the question. So boat one and its occupants were picked up by the RMS Carpathia shortly after 4.10 a.m., being the second lifeboat to reach the rescue ship. And the occupants were photographed as a group on the Carpathia. As the bo boat was hoisted above the Carpathia along with the other Titanic lifeboats and brought back to New York. However, one of those davits from which boat one was lowered actually remains upright to this very day. And it's actually in relatively good condition too. Now, there's some controversy that has been going on Due to the rumors that Sir Cosmo bribed the crew in his boat to not rescue people left in the water after the ship went down, and some of the press reports dubbed Boat 1 as the Money Boat. However, the appearance of Cosmo and Lucy Duffgorn as witnesses as the British investigation into the disaster drew the largest crowd seen during the inquiry. According to the British inquiry testimony of the crew member Charles Hendrickson, he had proposed returning to rescue survivors after the Titanic sank, but the women objected. Consequently, he claimed that the boat did not go back to pick up any swimmers, although he did admit that there were plenty of room for another dozen. And he's, he's got a point, though. You had 12 people, and you have room for 28 more on there. It was claimed during the course of the inquiry by crewman George Simons and others that it was Lucy Duffgorn, who actually expressed concern that the lifeboat might be swamped if it returned, and that's also another concern as well. She denied the charge, and her testimony was supported by other crew members who revealed they had not heard her objection nor any proposal to turn back. However, according to the testimony of Robert Pusey, a conversation concerning money occurred in the boat around 3 a.m., nearly an hour after the Titanic went down, Claim the discussion was prompted by a private comment Lucy Duffgorn made to Mabel Francadelli. There's your beautiful nightdress gone. Over here in the exchange, Pussy replied, Never mind, you have saved your lives. Afterward, complained that he and the other sailors had not lost everything, but their pay has stopped as the time the ship went down. Cosmo Duffgorn actually responded, I will give you a fiver each to start a new kit. 
However, on the 16th of April, the day after the rescue, each Boat One crew member received a five pounds check from Cosmo Duff Gorin. And the inquiry actually issued a report after reviewing the evidence that their probe included sworn testimony from every member of Boat One's crew as well as an affidavit from Mabel, as the report actually did stated, quote, the very gross charge against Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon that, having gotten to number one boat, he bribed the men in it to row away from the drowning people is unfounded. But however, the report is astonished the occupants of boat one not making an effort to rescue the survivors from the water. Now, for those that don't know, there is a deleted scene in the 1997 James Cameron Titanic movie with Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon played by Martin Jarvis and Lucy Duff Gordon, Rosalind Ayers, I can't pronounce her last name, are shown seated in Lifeboat 1 when Fireman Hendrickson recommends rescuing people in the water. Sir Cosmo looks at his wife, who appears very distressed before replying, It's out of the question. The 2012 television miniseries Titanic, Lady Duff Gordon, is shown staying in Boat 1, urging her secretary to get in with her, saying, Don't be a fool. This boat isn't sinking. That one is pointing to the ship. She's later shown telling Officer Murdoch to allow some men onto the boat, including her husband, then ordering him to lower the boat. Yeah, and this build is actually really, really quick. So it was like under an hour, maybe an hour to me anyway. And then finally, the loading and launching of Boat 1 and the occupant's decision not to return to the wreck site after the Titanic sinking was actually also portrayed in the film A Night to Remember based on Walter Lord's namesake book. This is Miss Frank Kelly, I still cannot pronounce her last name, who was actually alive around that time, was actually omitted. You could definitely tell how fast this build is and there goes all the minifigures. Now trying to position them all in there is just so difficult. Like you can uh, have all the figures in there or you can just have them out and just basically stand next to it or you could try to recreate that group photo that they were in and I will possibly pop it up there if I do find it yeah and of course the oars is just very difficult and you might see me struggle in this one so I will save you some time to go ahead and skip all the way to the end yeah basically in this part I was just having a very enjoyable time to getting all the figures into the lifeboat like I was Murdoch trying to get them in there anyway and I should have like a Murdoch figure next to the lifeboat and just lowering weight now this lifeboat is actually 135th scale which is actually not that bad whatsoever is actually great to minifigure scale anyway and of course trying to reorganize the seats trying to get them all in there make sure the pieces snap and it's all done and there we go got lifeboat number one all finished up now there are some historical characters on there that you possibly saw like we got Sir Cosmo Duff Gordon right here his wife Lucy secretary and we also I think one of these happened to be the lookouts along with Archie Jewell and the rest are just the other uh, crewmen that work down below in the lower sh ship's lower decks. Yeah, so this is class, not class. Oh, I was thinking classical for you, hey, or something. So, <laughs> sorry about that. So, yeah, this is a uh, lifeboat number one, the controversial lifeboat, the one that got off with with twelve people on board. And for those that don't know. In the 1997 Titanic movie, there is a deleted scene in there called It's Out of the Question, which actually did take place on this very same lifeboat. I would play it, but then again, uh, copyright just is kind of funky, especially when it comes to historical references. So I may or may not feature that scene in the documentary. It will depend on how they like it. If not, I won't feature it, but... Then again, if I put it in there and if it gets blo blocked, then I'll try to find a way. So yeah, this is lifeboat number one, the controversial lifeboat.
filled. So I think that'd be all for this review anyway. So yeah. If you happen to like this time-lapse build, don't worry, there will be another ship soon. I may do one in the new year, so keep an eye out for that. So yeah, anyway, my name is Dustin, and hopefully you subscribe for more Histo Brick builds and also some ship documentaries that I am planning on doing. And for those that don't know that it's Keeping Up With My Community tab, I did post some Something saying that my Normandy documentary is actually coming along really well at the time of this recording. So, got a good chunk of it done, but hopefully I'm anticipating a release on February 9th. So, anyway, once again, my name is Dustin, and I will see you guys in another video.